I have heard several arguments for the Earth being only 6,000 years old in my time, and one thing that's common with all of them is some sort of grounding in science. Young Earth creationists seem to love science, so why do they miss the mark so widely when it comes to the age of the Earth? Let's find out, shall we, as one Young Earth creationist thinks that starlight fits the Young Earth model. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin with today's video though, a massive thank you to the sponsors, Storyblocks. The Storyblocks is a stock media subscription service offering unlimited access to high quality stock videos, images, music, sound effects and more. Helping creators and businesses enhance their projects without extra costs and more peace of mind. Now, unlike traditional stock platforms, Storyblocks provides an unlimited model with easy to use tools to streamline your creative workflow. Now, I've recently been working on a short documentary about about Earth's motion. And Storyblocks has been vital in helping me do this. With Storyblocks, you get unlimited downloads of diverse, high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Everything you need is in one place. 4K and HD video, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more. You can choose a monthly or annual plan with no hidden or extra fees, and that gets you an unlimited source of content that gives you the freedom to test, experiment, and create more effective video. And the stock library is incredibly authentic, created by real artists. It allows you to tell more powerful, authentic stories with unique footage from real artists from around the world. Every asset reflects real experiences crafted with intention and creativity. I am certain that I can create a short documentary worthy of the topic and Storyblocks will help me do that. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash Simandan or click the link in the description. Right then on with today's video, which comes from young earth creationist and messenger of truth. He thinks that Starlight helps his case. Let's have a look, shall we? Today, we're going to be talking about distant starlight. This is going to be one of the most common arguments that people try to use against young earth creationism, which is basically the belief that God's word is true. Genesis and Exodus clearly teach that God created the heavens and the earth in six days. Now, before I answer the distant starlight problem, I just want to point out that I have honestly never heard any objection to these two arguments. There are a lot of Christians out there who try to hold to old earth as well as the scriptures. Now they do so inconsistently, but here's the deal. Read Exodus chapter 20. Is this poetry? Is this like revelation, apocalyptic imagery? Or is this the Ten Commandments, right? You shall have no other gods before me. Is this symbolic? No. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Does this mean I might be able to steal sometimes? Am I really supposed to honor my mother and father? Is this symbolic for something else? No, this is a straightforward passage. Right, an interesting start here. A messenger of truth is saying that the book of Exodus should be taken literally. Now Exodus 31, 18 says, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him, upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. So the actual finger of God carved the commandments on the stone, did it? The actual finger? Hmm, I'm not sure, my friend. And what does verse 11 say? For in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This is the basis for the six day work week that the Israelites had. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Why? Because God worked in six days and rested on the seventh or ceased his work on the seventh. There are some people who say that, oh, we're still in the seventh day and it's been thousands of years. And so it could be that these six days are also so thousands of years long. Well, even if that's the case, because a thousand years is like a day to God, that would get you to 12,000 years, not billions of years. Either way, God resting on the seventh does not mean that the seventh day is this long drawn out period of time. He starts by insisting the days must be literal, not symbolic, not flexible, but literal. Then two sentences later, he says, even if a day is a thousand years to God, those two positions both cannot be true. Either the days are literal 24 hours, or the word day can represent a vastly longer period. If the days are literal, they're literal. If they're flexible, 
they're flexible. You cannot defend young earth creationism by switching definitions mid-sentence and pretending no one noticed because we did. Should we get to his actual argument, yes? Yeah, let's do that. Now, this right here is the common argument. Light travel time. The speed of light, c, is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. A light year is the distance light travels in one year, about 9.46 trillion kilometers. Some galaxies, like those in the Hubble Deep Field, are over 13 billion light years away. This is the Hubble Deep Field, if you're wondering. If the universe were only 6,000 years old, there wouldn't have been enough time for this light to reach us, okay? So it's pretty easy argument to understand there is stars there's galaxies that we can detect that are billions of light years away and by the way this is like actual science we can observe these distant galaxies again no christian well some christians might deny science but we have these telescopes they look out into space and they receive this data and nobody is going to disagree with the facts there's light coming from these distant galaxies it's just how you are interpreting the facts up to a point this is actually fine yes the speed of light is around 300,000 kilometers per second. Yes, a light year is distance. Yes, we observe galaxies billions of light years away, including those in the Hubble Deep Field. So far, there's no disagreement from me. The problem is he ends up talking about interpretation, which is probably where the wheels are going to fall off, I imagine. And the fact is that nobody has ever actually measured the one-way speed of light. It is perfectly scientific to say that the light arrives here instantly. This is technically true, but also completely misleading. Yes, measuring the one-way speed of light requires clock synchronization. That's been known since the days of Albert Einstein. But here's what doesn't follow from that. Therefore, light could arrive instantly. That leap is just unjustified. We haven't measured the one-way speed of light directly, but everything that works depends on light being finite. Saying light arrives instantly is not science. If you want to get caught up to speed on the science of this, the physics, then I recommend you watch this video from Veritasium, why no one has measured the speed of light. If you want a Christian source on this, I recommend you look up the Biblical Science Institute. This is a Jason Lyles website. The link to that will be in the description. But basically, here's a quote from Einstein himself. Light requires the same time to traverse the path A to M as for the path B to M is in reality neither a supposition nor a hypothesis about the physical nature of light, but a stipulation which I can make of my own free will in order to arrive at a definition of simultaneity. You don't have to understand everything that he just said right here, but the point is the one-way speed of light is up to your own free will. You guys know I love that phrase. Yes, Albert Einstein said synchronization is a stipulation, but he did not say that light can travel at any speed you like. He was talking about how we define simultaneity, not rewriting reality. Earlier, he insisted that the science is settled and the facts we can agree on. Now physics is suddenly free will. Speed is negotiable and causality is optional. That is not following science. Free will is one of my favorite topics. It is perfectly consistent scientifically to say that the light arrives here instantly. It is very counterintuitive, but the one-way speed of light is indeed a convention. You can just make it up. I know you've heard this before. Light takes eight minutes from the sun to get here. When you're looking at the sun, really you're seeing the sun as it was eight minutes ago. That's actually not true according to my convention, which is that the light arrives here instantly. And that's also the Bible's convention and also the convention that literally everybody everywhere uses all the time in casual conversations and just regular everyday talk, which is how we would want God to speak to us. Okay. Calling the one-way speed of light a convention does not mean you can just make it up. Conventions are constrained. They must still agree with reality. Instantaneous light does not, I'm afraid. He says, according to my convention, the light arrives instantaneously. But then the sun would be visible before it emitted light and able to affect Earth before any signal left it. That breaks relativity, cause and effect, and every working satellite system. Nobody says, hey, the sun rose eight minutes ago, or hey, those stars look really nice in the sky billions of years ago. No, we say they look great right now. <laughs> look, I'm looking at it right now, and that's perfectly scientific. Everyday language is not physics, it's just shorthand. When we say the sun rose this morning, we're not rejecting orbital mechanics. We're just simplifying things. No one thinks that casual speech overrides measurement. Saying I see it now doesn't mean the light arrived instantly. It means the information has arrived. How long it took still matters. So once again with the sun analogy, if we're using the Einstein convention, which is assuming that the one-way speed of light is the same in both directions, hey, the sun produces light and it takes 
eight minutes to get to our eyes, and it takes eight minutes to get back to the sun. However, it is just as scientific to say that the light arrives instantly to our eyes and takes 16 minutes to get back. No, it isn't. This misrepresents what Einstein meant about convention. Einstein's synchronization convention did not permit different physical light speeds. It permits different descriptions of the same finite process. You are not free to assign light any speed you like. Convention describes measurement. They do not override reality, I'm afraid. Instant here delayed back is not science. Now, I'm no expert in relativity, but this is something that isn't even debated among people who know anything about relativity. I mean, even Einstein himself said that it's of his own free will to decide the one-way speed of light because it's not something that can be measured. Similar to how someone who is bilingual can just choose which language they're going to speak. What's the proper way to say hello? Well, it's hello in English. You can say hola in Spanish, though. Now, when it comes to people who don't understand that time itself is relative and how space and the speed of light interacts with all that, they might say, no, it only makes sense that the speed of light is the same in both directions. But that would be like saying, no, the correct way to say hi is hello. Hola, no, that's wrong. It just makes more sense to say hello. Now, this analogy completely fails. Choosing to say hello or hola changes words. Choosing light to be instantaneous changes physical causality. These are not even in the same universe. Language describes the same event with different symbols. Physics describes how events happen. If I say the sun exploded or el sol exploto, that explosion doesn't happen faster in Spanish. But if you say light arrives instantly, you're changing when information arrives, not how it's described. Now there is more to a messenger of truth video here, but what he's basically saying is this. While light gets the places instantly. So therefore the earth and universe could be young because there's no travel time. This does not solve the light travel time issue, it deletes it. Instead of explaining how light got here faster, he just declares it didn't need time at all. That is not a scientific explanation. And notice the cost. To make this work, you have to accept instantaneous signals, broken causality, physics that contradicts every experiment and every working technology, all to protect a timeline chosen in advance. So yes, the entire argument reduces to, if I redefine how light works, the evidence stops being a problem, which is fine as theology, but not as physics. And that is where we're gonna leave it for today. Let's wrap up another video. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of a Messenger of Truth video. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today as ever. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash Simon Dan or click the link in the description. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for part three of Eric DeBay proving the earth doesn't move. Should be good. See you then.